Hi, my name is Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. My guest today is Lisa Oswald. Lisa is a partner based in our Richmond, Virginia office. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Tracy. Thank you for being here. Lisa leads our performance audit group. And so today we're going to focus on a very important fiduciary responsibility, that being audit. So Lisa, to get us started focusing specifically on employers with self-insured plans, why are audits so important? So I, I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of, you know, fiduciary obligations. That's probably the most important. And and, you know, from that perspective, just really ensuring that the plan dollars are spent accurately and where applicable recovery is occurring and the plan is made whole, types of errors could be as small as a processor error, um, you know, or, or a, a high cost claim, which could cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, but a major concern is also systemic errors, uh, claims that uh, are automated and bumped up against a system edit. If that system edit is wrong, every claim that hits that edit is also going to be wrong. Some employers may have internal audit requirements that um, necessitate periodic audits of their health plans. Member dissatisfaction is a, a big determinant of audits. There could be periods of um, dissatisfaction around plan payments or some operational areas that need a deep dive. Uh, employers may also identify plan cost anomalies year over year or even on a, you know, a monthly basis that require a really deep dive to determine what happened. So what are some best practices that you want to share with our audience as it relates to aud audits? So what we generally see is about 95% of our audits identify plan overpayments. That, that's big. Um, we don't identify a lot of um, underpayments, meaning that, that you know, the, the plan didn't pay enough because members will generally make a phone call if they're not paying what they think they should or they're not obtaining coverage for something that they think should be covered. Whereas plan overpayments uh, are largely go unidentified. So I think in terms of cadence from a best practice perspective, we recommend a baseline audit. And generally that's going to be medical, probably first priority, pharmacy, second priority. And once you've established that baseline, you've got a good understanding of how your vendors are processing your claims. They may be very satisfactory, they may be unsatisfactory. And, you know, depending on those results, you're going to want to set a cadence. But assuming that the results are fairly satisfactory, we recommend a strategy of every two to three years, staggering your medical and your pharmacy. Maybe in some of the off years, you may want to pepper in audits such as rebates. You may want to look at your dental plan, your combined accumulators, or, you know, special targeted type audits. Also something that we need to keep in mind or, or not forget about is implementation audits. Where plan changes are made or vendor changes are made, it's important that out of the gate, those are done correctly. Um, it, it, you know, it helps alleviate some of that member dissatisfaction that I mentioned and also ensures that you don't have to go back and retroactively recover um, money from errors made. One thing that's important to note is that most vendors offer audit credits mm -hmm. uh, that you can build right into your contract or your amendment. So on an annual basis, you don't have to worry about budgeting or justifying the dollars for these important audits. So that's a really good point. Um, and if you're not sure if your contract has that kind of language in it, double check because that's not something that you just want to forget to use. So I'm really glad you brought that up. So let's dig a little bit deeper into these more specialized types of audits. So besides the medical audit, and you mentioned dental, what other programs or benefit features do you audit and do you think employers might want to be focused in on? So on, on, I think pharmacy is important. And Tracy, as you'll recall, when we first started out in the audit world, um, pharmacy plans were relatively vanilla. I recall contracts were 10 to 15 pages. 
And now they can be upwards of a hundred pages. Um, and and, and the, the complexity of the plan design and the underlying requirements and the downstream impact, um, I, you know, I think from a claims perspective, pharmacy is also very important. 99% of those claims are going to hit a systemic edit. You know, they're very rarely manually processed. So making sure that those edits are correct and that there's no downstream impact is very important. Also on the pharmacy side, um, there's rebates. Most employers receive some level of a rebate from their pharmacy vendor, whether it's minimum guarantees, whether it's a percentage of invoiced amounts or a combination of both. And over the past several years, if not longer, there's been pretty significant government and media scrutiny on rebates and how they work. And it's, you know, it's a very complex process. And now we see Express Scripts, OptumRx, and CVS moving to more of a, you know, a, a GPO type arrangement. So that's a really new dynamic and change in how rebates are processed. We see employers focusing on kind of the out of network space, surprise billing, um, shared savings has become a very big topic and really peeling back the onion on how the savings are calculated, what's allowed within the contract. And that it, does that make sense from a sharing perspective? Plan accumulators. So verifying that that out of pocket between two vendors or multiple vendors is being handled accurately. I think that's really important. Most of the vendors have the right infrastructure in place. They can share that information, you know, whether it's on a weekly or, or um, daily or even a real-time basis, they can share the information. The challenge is ensuring that there's reconciliation that occurs and members aren't exceeding those accumulators. Um, we also, uh, I think another challenge is reporting for employers. Most vendors do not offer any sort of reporting on that reconciliation and maybe the number of members that have gone over and, and the correction and all of that. So I think accumulators are very important as well. Okay, so a lot to audit for. Yeah. You know, I'm guessing that the next frontier for audits will be the new transparency and coverage requirements where self-insured employers are on the hook for compliance, even though they will be relying 100% on their vendor partners to be able to comply. And so what types of new audits do you think will come as a result of these new requirements? You're right. When you say new frontier, that's, you know, that's exactly what it is, especially in terms of the type of data that we're used to seeing or sharing or reviewing, or even from a vendor perspective, producing. Mm -hmm. um, the, the volume is expected to be very high, especially for the machine readable files. So, you know, the challenge is being able to independently verify whether it's you know the number of records whether the the fields are correct and maybe even down to independently verifying um, values in certain fields um, you know I, I I think with this pretty significant penalties that are in place of a hundred dollars per participant per day for failure to you know produce the files accurately I think it's very important to have a second set of eyes, take a peek at that. Let's make sure they're accurate, um, at, you know, out of the gate and then going forward. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, those files are huge. So it's not like an employer could just go in on their own and, and open them up. They would literally crash their computer because they're going to be so big, the machine readable files, that is. Um, but also, you know, probably opportunities um, with regard to compliance with the No Surprises Act and how those surprise medical bills get paid, the reimbursement levels, et cetera. It'll be very interesting to see how that, you know, compares to current practices, what really changes. So Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today and thank all of you for being here and joining us on Mercer Health News.